Good morning. Welcome to all of you for the third program of E Sikshana by VTU. I think we should all uh, feel very happy to be a part of it. And uh, I think I am very proud of the entire E Sikshana program, and it's a great initiative by uh, VTU. And uh, this is the third course I'm handling. And as I mentioned, I'm very happy to be a part of this. So in this course, uh, I'll be uh, taking up uh, electromagnetic field theory, which is a, a three credit course in the fourth semester of electrical and electronics uh, B program. And uh, along with me, I have Dr. Smita. Uh, from the ECA Department of RNS Institute of Technology and uh, Dr. Abhai from the ECA Department of RV uh, College of Engineering who will be handling the course along with me. Now, uh, this course is considered like a nightmare for all electrical science students whether they are from electrical or electronics uh, background and uh, right from our student days we were terrorized about the subject electromagnetic field uh, theory and uh, you know we were always uh, worried about whether we will get through this and so on and uh, I'm sure that's the concern of almost all the students and uh, uh, you would possibly have heard your seniors uh, tell you that this is a tough course etc etc firstly do not worry about it because we three are here to make it as simple as possible for you and uh, EMF theory if taught properly uh, is actually not as tough as it is made out to be uh, a lot of fear is because there are there is some uh, abstract physics in the course and uh, if not related uh, properly uh, this could lead to a lot of confusion in the students and that's one reason why the subject has that aura around it okay so to all the students who are watching this program uh, please go with an open mind and uh, we will see that you know this course is made as simple as possible for all of you and you all learn it well and do well also in the course uh, so um, some of you know me for those of you who do not know me I am professor Uma Rao I'm a professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering at uh, RV College of Engineering, Bengaluru. So in today's class, what will we be doing? If you just see, my learning objectives for today's class is, uh, we will define a scalar and a vector, and we will see how a vector is represented, and we will look at some important operations on vectors. Now you can ask me, this is a course on field theory, what are you doing teaching us mathematics? Uh, firstly, uh, a thorough understanding of vector algebra and a little bit of vector calculus is important for you to plow through the subject on EMF theory. So, uh, and at about two to three classes, I will be spending on uh, the vectors, uh, the vector algebra and vector calculus, whatever is needed for the course in uh, EMF theory. And uh, trust me, if you do not have a grasp on vector, then you would find it uh, difficult uh, to follow the course. Uh, uh, that doesn't mean that if you know you will not uh, do you able to, you will not be able to do anything. But the very heart of the field, the f electromagnetic fields, the heart of it is that the electric fields and magnetic fields are vectors okay so if you do not treat them from a vector perspective I would say that the whole treatment of the course is wrong clear so you I, I do know there is some content available and there are some books available uh, where there is absolutely no mention of vectors but that's a very wrong perspective and that's not the right way to learn the subject so you have to work on the fields as vectors and not as scalar quantities. Possibly these terms you have heard in physics and so let us see uh, what it is and why this is important. So as you go through the course uh, you will realize that vectors are very very important. Okay fine. So firstly 
I think we'll just see what is the mathematics you need for this course. So I have vector analysis and here you will need vector algebra and vector differential calculus and vector integral calculus okay but we will make we will not make too much use of the integral calculus so we will be mostly concerned with algebra and differential calculus okay and the next you have uh, the coordinate systems uh, which possibly you may not have done in maths i am not very sure if your mathematics courses covers this so we will be dealing with three coordinate systems the cartesian coordinate which we are normally familiar with the x y z okay system and you have a cylindrical system and a spherical system so this slide is briefly to tell you what mathematics you have to look for in the course and this mathematics i will be dealing with in the first three classes okay and uh, just go through with me be with me and if you get the hang of this maths the rest of the course is simple clear fine now you possibly have done about uh, scalars and vectors in physics so what is a scalar a formal definition would be it is a quantity whose value may be represented by a number real number which is either positive or negative so it's just got a value it's got a number right so example is distance what is the distance from point x by 10 kilometers then i am not talking of whether it's east west i'm only talking of the distance right what is it? it is minus or it is plus or degree this border For example, orbiters. All have to different. For example, easily do easily get a person comparison to parameters with clear scalar quantity space we okay so vectors are spatially Defined, you a direction in Deals told you clear impact of vector vector identification only special uh, function. So if the value is scalar, then 
temperature like for example it's called as a scalar so supposing you had your measure of the room ac is temperature its value at diffs in space because i temperature ten number so that is called as a vector field so what kind of field is that a region that would obviously be. what wind velocity vector field both and vectors of this is plotting you can plot like this space gives that i have taken it that is in a book okay that is so simple a b c a b c any bold okay positive or a negative but the difference is it direction noted by arrow on top and have a direction or left to right indicate the, it is the arrow note that torque all these are vector quantities okay now a vector quantity completely dis a number of it's always if you give it in the rotens and a direction a force of 50 direction that's not you would minus in the way you see minus 15 then that negative sign would be for friction that is the next direction rat magnitude getting so the uh, minus 15 minus meters per second minus is attached unlike a 20 dh to the represented graphically so graphically the vector is say represented arrow vector a is a vector a and it is from point o p starting point the point this is called as the terminating point or end point or the of the vector or point now the length you can choose to some scale For example 1 cm is meter per hour well all right and scale you can uh, would and the direction is directed along the direction of the vector so this if i draw a vector like entered in this direction okay that's the meaning so you can relatively see now a vector like uh if i if i if i draw a vector like this that means it's oriented in this direction so we can easily do it in just a minute i'm searching for yeah this is better okay now will will this uh, all next classes will be defining a lot of things and i would suggest go through with me and note down a things so that you will re refresh you. now a unit vector as the name implies is a vector whose magnitude is unity right and the direction of the vector is a direction given by the quantity a vector along a vector indicates its direction for example supposing i say you know a vehicle is moving 20 kilometers per hour in the northern direction right so a, a vector in the north direction whose magnitude is 1 is the unit vector did you get it okay now so the unit vector basically since its magnitude is only 1 it contains information about the direction of the vector so any vector a is given by magnitude of a into the unit vector along a now get used to some symbols so this modulus symbol gives you the magnitude of the vector and a common practice is to use the letter a a few authors also use the letters u for unit vector but many people use a so a means unit vector lower case small letter a means unit vector and i put a suffix here a which tells me it is a unit vector in the direction of vector a got it so if i say a small a b that means it's a unit vector in the direction of vector b so from from this i can get the unit vector is the actual vector divided by its magnitude so we have this you will be using it often please remember this note down so a unit vector is equal to the vector divided by magnitude of the vector so with this you can get the unit vector along the direction of any vector okay so this is the first thing we have defined what is the meaning of a unit vector next simple cartesian system you are used to this kind of a graph right from your high school right so what do i show here this is a two dimensional graph i have the x axis and i have the y axis so i i mark all points like this so you know how a point is marked you can mark it in any of the four 
quadrants and I have my origin this is 0 0 so I can just draw a line from anywhere to anywhere I, to get a vector so what does the line tell you it will tell you where this point is located okay so this is your simple Cartesian system we are all familiar with this so let's go further so that is a two-dimensional Cartesian system now if I want three-dimensional take your room for example your room is a three-dimensional our, our universe itself our perceived universe what we can see is a three-dimensional picture right so though there are other dimensions mathematically you can have hyperplanes and you can have more than three dimensions but our perception perceived space is three-dimensional so how do we represent three dimensions I represent I think even possibly you're familiar with this also X Y and Z I'm going to tell a few things it's important for you when you do the fields you should know where your configurations are located either the charge or the current so this is very very important so you see here what how I have plotted X Y and Z so this is in the anti-clockwise direction this is fixed okay otherwise you can take clockwise normally this is the one which is normally followed so if I mark this axis as X then this will be Y and this will be Z if I mark this as X this will be Y and this will be Z clear so a little bit of visualization and picturization is important in field theory right so I'll try to put some pictures and maybe you know try to explain to you how to visualize it will make make your uh, uh, understanding simple so now you see here I want X to be 0 so here what happens every point in a three-dimensional space is specified by three points what are they X Y and Z so if I have a point P here it is 1 2 3 that means this point P from the X axis it is 1 right and along the Y axis if you see here this would be 2 and in the Z axis it would be 3 right so just like how you do in a two dimensional plot you can locate in the three dimensions also so now let's see here so if I take if I just take any point here with X 0 what will I have if I take any point here with X you you have three walls you you have you, you picturize your room right you take any corner and let's say the cor the uh, you know the line facing us the wall is um, X axis then th this would be Y and the vertical axis would be Z so in if you consider any wall of your room right so it would it would touch the origin so if you take a wall the wall is two dimensional so only two parameters will be varying so I can take either the floor I mean I'm considering the floor also as a wall because it's flat I can consider either the floor or 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 the vertical wall or the side walls okay so in in all these three oh, one axis parameter would be zero so here if I take this wall here x is 0 but y and z are varying right so this is this any point on this wall would be specified by x 0 0 y z right because x is 0 so it is called as the y z plane now let me take the floor right at the floor what happens height z is 0 so this x and y will vary so any point on the floor will be equal to x y 0 now let me take the side wall of the room right so in the side wall there is no horizontal movement so y will be 0 and so x and z will vary now what happens to the other side of the wall so if one side it is the same so it is only that wherever you you can define the origin and from the origin you can talk of positive values and negative values right and what is this point in space any point in the room if you take apart from the wall and the floor and the ceiling if you take what will happen it will have XYZ it will have all the three values but if you take any of the walls one of them will be zero so you can divide your space 
into planes where x is 0 or z is 0 or y is 0. Right? Now if x is not 0, but let us say x is equal to 1. x is fixed at 1 and y and z change. I told you visualization is important. So x is fixed at 1 and y and z change. So what can you expect? This is at x is equal to 1. Right? So you just think you are moving your wall to the front by say 1 meter. Right? So what will happen there? x will be 1 and y and z can vary from plus or minus infinity if you assume that it's an infinite wall. Right? So similarly if I take z is equal to 1 that means what I, I take 1 meter above the ground and then I have a plane like this. So what would it have? z will be 1 and x and y will be varying as I move along the plane. So whenever you want to think of configurations in field theory just visualize it how it would actually look like. Right? So now the unit vectors I told you are denoted by A. So what is AX? Remember A stands for unit vector and X stands for the direction. So AX is a unit vector directed along the X axis and AY is a unit vector directed along Y axis and AZ along Z axis. Right? And any vector in space I can mark it by R. So you just see here, what do I, what have I done here? I have joined the origin and the point. I get a vector r. Okay. So now, how do, if I have a vector a, how do I resolve it into components? So, just look at this. Here I have r, right? So this vector, I can project it to x-axis, I can project it on to y-axis, x-axis and z-axis, right? So these, the values I project, that will give me the component. You remember in your graph, what do you do? You know, if you, if you just have, the, let, let me take only two dimension. You have this, then what do you do here? This projection, this is one component and this projection is another component. So you will say this is r cos theta and this is r sin theta. That's how you do in two dimensions. The same thing extends to three dimensions. Okay. So you will be projecting onto three axis instead of two axis. So we, we denote the values as a is the vector. Ax, Ay, Az. So if you look at this, I have put an arrow on top of all this. So remember an arrow means it's a vector. So the vector A is equal to the sum of its components along x direction, y direction and z direction. Right? So here, what is the x direction? How do I denote the x direction? We, we discussed. I have a unit vector which denotes only the direction. So the vector AX in the X direction, I can write it as simple AX into unit vector along X. What is the difference between these two? Please see here. This, the vector is along with the component and here it is it is written not in bold face. So this is the scalar which is the magnitude and AX is the unit vector. So I write the vector A as AX into unit vector in along X plus AY into unit vector along Y plus AZ into unit vector along Z. So here these AX, AY, AZ are simply numbers. Right? They are the values of the vector along the directions of X, Y and Z. Okay? Now, the magnitude of the vector A, you know in two dimensions, if you have a line segment, the magnitude is root of x squared plus y squared. And in three dimensions, it is root of ax squared plus ay squared plus az squared. These are all components. And what is a unit vector along A? We, we saw the definition of the unit vector is the vector A divided by its magnitude. This is how you resolve a vector in three dimensions and in two dimension if you see you can also denote a vector um, with its magnitude and the angle it makes with respect to a reference. Now why did I specify that vectors are spatial quantities 
I will tell you now. In network theory, if you take, you have all added currents, voltages, etc. Right, like vector quantities. Okay, so if you want to add two complex currents, you will draw vectors and you can add it. But remember that what you are doing there, it is not a vector. You are not talking of the current there in space. Right? If you draw a current vector, we are not saying the conductor is oriented in that direction. They are all representation, they are purely mathematical representations of phasors. Phasors are sinusoidally varying quantities. So phasors are not vectors. They are not spatial quantities there. Only the algebra and mathematics is similar to vectors and phasors. So please bear that in mind. Fine. So now let's come to some simple operations. I want to add two vectors. Okay. So what, what do I do? This is vector A. Right. These are all the components along x, y and z directions. And this is vector B. Obviously the total along the x direction is A plus B and this. So you, what are you doing here? You are simply adding the corresponding components. Obviously. Right. It makes sense. So when you, same thing with subtraction. If instead of addition you had subtraction, all this would be minus. Right. So this is the first operation, arithmetic operation you have with vectors. Addition or subtraction. Next. So now let, 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 let us do a simple problem. I have a vector g2 minus 2 minus 1. So this is another way of writing where it means that this vector g has 2 along x direction minus 2 along y direction and minus 1 along z direction. So g is equal to 2ax minus 2ay minus az. Now you can tell me that time you told that the minus is with the um, direction and not the magnitude. Yes. So here it, it, it this is same as saying it is plus 1 in the minus az direction. Okay. So this is my vector g. Now the magnitude is simply root of 2 square plus 2 square plus 1 square which is 3 and the unit vector is g by magnitude of g. So this is g by magnitude of g is 3. So it is 2 by 3 ax minus 2 by 3 ay minus 1 by 3 az. And if you look at the magnitude of that it will be equal to 1. So this is how you can find the unit vector along any direction. Clear? Fine. So we saw about addition and subtraction. Let's next come to multiplication. The first multiplication is I multiply a vector by a scalar. So what do I tell you? I am applying a force of 10 newtons in the northern direction. I, I multiply it by 2. Immediately you know that you have applied 20 newtons. Same. The direction remains the same. Clear? That's the meaning of multiplication of a vector by a scalar. I'm going to scale up the components, values of the vector. So if I have a vector A, then alpha A will simply be if whatever this length is, the length I would have decided keeping some scale in mind, into alpha and the direction will remain unchanged. A very good example is your force is equal to mass into acceleration. Right? So the, the direction of the acceleration is actually in the direction of the force you are applying. Mass is a scalar quantity. So if you double the mass, the force will double. But the direction of the force will not change. Next, I have multiplication of two vectors. Multiplication, you know, it is, you don't... Uh, it's just an operation we describe. It's, I wouldn't even say it's a multiplication. We'll call it as a product. Okay. So the first one is the product of a scalar and a vector. The second is a dot product. So when you consider two vectors, when you consider two vectors, there are two types of products defined. The first product is defined as the dot product. Possibly you have done it in maths. But here we will see what is the significance. Right. So if it is written by a dot 
and these are bold faced to, to indicate that they are vectors. So what, how do you define the dot product? It's magnitude of A into magnitude of B into cos theta AB, right? And what is theta AB? It is the angle, the smaller angle between A and B. So when you draw two vectors, you have 360 degree angle possible, right? So if you move in one direction, you get one angle. If you move in the other direction, you will get another angle. So it is a smaller angle between A and B. This is the standard definition. Now, cos theta AB, since it is the angle you are taking, A dot B will be equal to B dot A. So, in the dot product, the cos theta does not change, you know, from A to B or B to A, it does not uh, change. So, A dot B will be equal to B dot A, right? Now, let us see here, what happens if A and B are parallel? If A and B are parallel, the angle becomes 0, then A dot B is simply the magnitude of A into magnitude of B. What happens if A and B are perpendicular? Right? Then the dot product cos theta will be 90 degrees and then the dot product will be 0. So the dot product of two vectors that are perpendicular is 0. Right? Now, now very simple. So Ax dot Ay okay is equal to ay dot ax all these are unit vectors is equal to ax dot az all all these will be equal to zero why ax ay az they are all perpendicular to each other right in your cartesian coordinate the x y z, z axis they are all perpendicular orthogonal so any two vectors if you take unit vectors their product will be equal to 0 right now if I if I take the dot product of two vectors so now just see here and what will be ax dot ax first I want you to observe that this is a scalar quantity there is no direction for this are you seeing it there is direction for a there is direction for b but the dot product is scalar Remember, the dot product of two vectors is a scalar quantity. Very simple example is your work done. Work done is F dot DL. The force applied, the dot product with the length or the direction in which the force is applied. That is the work done. So work done is scalar, force is vector, the direction is also vector. Okay, so now if I have two uh, the same things which we considered here, yes, if I take the dot product of these, right, so this dot this, so what do I have, ax dot bx, right, into this ax dot ax is 1, but ax dot ay, ax dot az, it is all equal to 0. Similarly, ay dot ax, ay dot az is 0. az dot ax, az dot ay is 0. So, out of the 9 components which I will have on multiplying, only 3 will be there and 6 of them will be 0. So, what will I get if I take the dot product? ax, bx, ay, by, az, bz. Right, so that's that is how you calculate the dot product which I have given in the formula. So if you have any two vectors, then ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. What is ax? The ax is the component of vector a in the x direction, component of vector b. This is simple multiplication only, and this whole thing will give you a number, one number. Right, so the dot product is a number, it is a scalar quantity without a direction now a dot a obviously the angle is zero is a square which is equal to the magnitude of a whole squared okay and unit vector the dot product of the same unit vector is always equal to one these are some things you please remember as i said i hope you are with me and you are noting down something instead of watching the lecture like a movie and uh, please keep referring to this and I would suggest all students whatever I am teaching on vectors write it in one place so that you can refer to it during the course anytime you need. Now you just see here if this is my vector right 
the projection of the vector b on a is given by a dot b that is the dot product divided by the magnitude of a see, see here i have two vectors a and b i am only showing two dimension for your understanding so this if i draw perpendicular here this gives me the projection of this gives me the projection of b on a now from from a if i draw a perpendicular to b that will give me the projection of a on b clear so the projection of any vector on any other vector you can get by taking their dot product and dividing by its magnitude so projection of b on a is a dot b by a bar and what is a by uh, magnitude of a this is nothing but the unit vector in a direction so it is simply a bar, small a bar dot b bar so what does this give you this gives you the projection of b on a and if i do a bar dot b bar i will get the projection of a on b this is important in the next class we will see why this projection is important just keep it in mind so if i want the projection of any vector along any direction i repeat if i want the projection of any vector along any direction i have to take the dot product of the vector along with the unit vector along the direction where i want the projection clear so the dot product with the unit vector will give you the projection along the direction of the unit vector we will see we will visit this again so i told you there are two types of products defined and the first is the dot product and the second is what we call as the cross product so the cross product of a and b is defined as an so its direction is in this direction we'll see what it is magnitude of a into magnitude of b into sin theta ab right and the sign of the smaller angle between a and b the direction of a cross b is perpendicular to the plane containing a and b so if you have a plane which contains no the direction perpendicular to the plane is the direction of the cross product and is along one of the two possible perpendiculars which is in the direction of so what we do is so if you have a plane surface i have two perpendiculars one up and one down so which do i consider you take the right hand screw right hand screw and move it from a to b that gives you the direction of the cross product i will teach you another simple way you uh, you just point your fingers in the direction of a and bend it in the direction of b the thumb will give you the direction of the cross product so you see if this is a and b is like this this gives me the direction if this is a it's the same thing if b is upwards this will give me the direction if a is like this and b is like this this will give me the direction that is another easy way of uh, finding out the direction of the cross product obviously since sin theta ab will be zero if a and b are parallel the cross product of two parallel vectors is zero okay so in your unit in your cartesian uh, system, yeah this is what it is right hand screw rule so whichever so in, in cartesian coordinates ax cross ax will be zero because the two are parallel sin theta theta will be zero similarly ay cross ay az cross az will all be zero now ax cross ay is az these are all unit unit vectors and you just remember it, it, it as a cycle x y z y z x z x y right and a cross b will be equal to minus b cross a so this is important this again you have to remember when you want to resolve into components lot of things to remember yeah now when i have two vectors a and b then the cross product is given by this determinant ax ay az these are the unit vectors 
and then the first vector ax ay az these are the components of vector a in x y z direction and bx by bz are the components in the y direction so this determinant will give you the cross product is it a vector or a scalar obviously it's a vector because of i have ax ay az take a simple example supposing a is 2ax minus 3ay plus az and b is minus 4ax minus 2ay plus 5az then the cross product what will be the dot product the dot product will be 2 into minus 4 plus minus 3 into minus 2 plus 1 into 5 it's a number that number is a dot product cross product ax ay az now write the components of first vector in 2 minus 3 and 1 and component of the second vector minus 4 minus 2 and 5 now you evaluate this determinant simple you do, you, you know it from maths so i get minus 13 ax minus 14 ay minus 16 az so you see this is a vector this is how you evaluate the cross product right so to, for you to remember this is a nice way right i have put ax ay az so ax into ay ax cross ay cross product will give you az ay cross az will give you ax right and then ax cross ay will give you az so you can just remember this is just a visualization for you to remember now I have just put a problem here. We will summarize whatever we have studied. This is from your textbook prescribed height. So a vector field is specified by g is equal to 24xy ax plus 12x square plus 2ay plus 18 is. Now I told you what is a field. What is a field? A field is a function which has some value at different points in space. So now you see the difference between a vector and a vector field. If I want to write g as a vector, I will simply write something like g is equal to 3ax minus 2ay plus az. But if I want to write g as a vector field, I have to write it as a function of x, y and z. Clear? So you see here what is written g is equal to 24xy ax. So here x and y are the points in space right and this 24xy is the is the value in the direction ax plus 12 x square plus 2 ay plus 18 z squared az this is a vector field so you cannot tell what it is until you know what are the point you are specifying x y z now i have given you two points p 1 2 minus 1 and q minus 2 1 3 so find g at p simple what is p 1 2 minus 1 so what you have to do is x is 1 y is 2 and z is minus 1 these values you have to substitute here okay in x y and z so that will give you g at this point so g is the vector field p is the point in space so this is another way of writing hate uses it so you I, that's why i put it so that you get familiar hate simply writes a vector as minus 8 72 162 what this means is this is minus 48 ax plus 72 ay plus 162 az i deliberately put it so that you people get aware of different nomenclatures which authors use and hate uses this so the vector field g at point p is given by this what is this minus 48 ax plus 72 ay plus 162 az how did i get that i substituted the coordinates of p in the vector function okay now find the unit vector very simple unit vector is the vector divided by its magnitude okay i have written something here what is a unit vector along g it is minus 0.26 ax plus 0.39 ay and plus 0.88 az that is what the notation means now i want a unit vector directed from q to p 
so q is this point p is this point so from q to p i draw a vector i want the unit vector in that direction so here what is the source source means starting point is q ending point is p so whenever you want to find the unit vector it is always coordinates of end point minus starting point i repeat it is the coordinate of the end point minus the starting point or coordinates of the destination minus the source so here respective coordinates x y z so here you see destination is p q so 1 minus of minus 2 that is 3 then 2 minus 1 that is 1 and minus 1 minus 3 that is minus 4 okay so that's how you find it so you can find the unit vector again once you get the vector you can find out now the equation on the, of the surface on which the magnitude of g is equal to 60 right the direction can change but i want the magnitude to be 60 so this is g this is g i want its magnitude to be equal to 60 what is the magnitude of this this is a vector field what's the magnitude of it 24 xy whole squared plus 12 into x squared plus 2 whole squared plus 18 z squared whole squared under root that's the magnitude that should be equal to 60 right simple that is the surface so all points x y z which satisfies that is the surface where the magnitude of g is equal to 60 so we will end the class with this so in today's class we saw what is a scalar a scalar is simply a parameter with a number that's all a value it can be either positive or negative a vector is a parameter which has both a magnitude and a direction in space right it's a spatial quantity and then we saw how to represent a vector in cartesian coordinates so and then we saw the definition of a unit vector and unit vector along any vector is given by a by magnitude of a so you can find the unit vector along any direction and the standard unit vectors are ax ay az in the cartesian coordinates right and then we saw you can multiply a scalar with a vector all the vector simply gets scaled its magnitude changes but its direction remains the same and then for for product of two vectors we define the dot product which is a scalar quantity it's simply magnitude of a into magnitude of b cos theta that is one expression and if you know the components of a and b it is simply ax bx plus ay by plus az bz and the dot product of a unit vector with any other vector gives you the projection of the vector along the unit vector direction then we saw the cross product a cross b which is given by a determinant the cross product is a vector okay so this is the introduction to vector algebra again we will meet in the next class thank you